Thanks to WHO and Global Climate and Health Alliance for this opportunity and thanks to the others for those inspiring case studies. Um, this case study is about the Our Climate, Our Health campaign for a national strategy on climate health and wellbeing in Australia. And I want to say thank you and acknowledge um, WHO's permission to use the framing of our, our climate, our health, which has been uh, a uniting kind of um, frame for this, this campaign in Australia. So this um, case study is about the development of a health sector led policy framework and the advocacy that's accompanied it um, to uh, for a national strategy on climate health and wellbeing for Australia. So I'm from the Climate and Health Alliance um, and we have led this initiative along with um, the members of our alliance. The topical issues that the case study addressed is, uh, is many. It's a very comprehensive roadmap. So it's about climate resilient health systems. It's about reducing emissions and mitigation. It involves mobilizing the health community. It includes adaptation measures advocacy and communications around climate change and health. So um, uh, the stakeholders who've been involved in its development include over 350 health leaders and experts, along with policymakers and um, 50 health groups who helped contribute to and then have endorsed the framework. The project has been led by Climate and Health Alliance, as I said, largely um, with in-kind support from our stakeholders and some support from the Lord Mayor's Charitable Foundation. And we began this initiative in 2015. So the key steps that um, have been taken in this case study to reduce the impacts of climate change on, on health have been engaging healthcare stakeholders in the co-design of this climate health policy roadmap. But that's led to the development of this comprehensive policy framework which is intended to guide policymakers, the health sector and the community to support them to take action to reduce emissions and build climate health resilience. It served to build capacity among healthcare stakeholders to recognise and advocate for an integrated approach to tackling climate change using a health lens. And it has served to raise awareness among policymakers, the community and the media about the links between climate change and health. So the implementation process for this um, campaign has uh, it's worked to build healthcare sector leadership and political support for a comprehensive policy roadmap to tackle the health impacts of climate change in Australia. It's designed to assist Australia to meet its commitments to health under the Paris Agreement and to provide a policy framework against which Australia can demonstrate its progress against the Lancet countdown indicators. Um, we began with a, um, um, so the model of engagement, we think um, in this case study is one that can be replicated by NGOs and governments in all countries and geographic settings. It applies universally recognised principles of community engagement regarding public policy, that all policy development should occur in consultation with and account for the needs and priorities of affected communities and stakeholders. So the campaign began with a discussion paper back in 2016 proposing the strategy and along with an accompanying national survey, this was used to guide an extensive consultation over around 18 months involving a series of workshops, forums, seminars and a nine day virtual conference. The insights and feedback from health stakeholders and experts was then used to develop the framework for a national strategy, which was then endorsed by health groups and presented to the federal parliament, where it was received by representatives of government from the Australian Labor Party, the opposition and the Greens. Both the Australian Labor Party and the Greens have endorsed the policy with these, the opposition committing to implement a national strategy on climate health and wellbeing if elected to govern. And we are looking to them to recommit to that in the lead up to the next federal election. So through this campaign, we have shaped policy at the local, state and national level on climate change and health. 
In the state of Victoria, all local governments are now required to prioritise climate change in their public health and wellbeing plans. The Queensland state government has adopted and is implementing a plan on human health and wellbeing um, and climate adaptation, which draws on our framework and which we developed in partnership with the National Climate Adaptation Research Facility. The federal government um, very recently has proposed um, in 2021 to develop a national environmental health strategy as part of its national preventative health strategy as one way in addressing the impacts of climate change on health. So this was a core ask of the Our Climate, Our Health campaign in 2020. And the Medical Journal of Australia and the Lancet Countdown Policy Brief for Australia has showcased this policy framework in three of its annual publications since 2017, with one of the top three recommendations in its 2020 report being the implementation of a national strategy on climate health and wellbeing for Australia, which establishes this campaign as a key influence on climate and health policy and advocacy agenda here in Australia. Now I'm just going to skip over the next couple of slides which are a more detailed timeline, but I'm happy to share the slides um, for people who want more information. So challenges and lessons learned. Um, in Australia, it's a very politically challenging environment, a lack of national coordination and leadership, and the lack of an authorising environment is a challenge. We've learned a lot through this campaign about building health sector leadership on climate action um, through collaboration. And by engaging a wide range of health stakeholders in the process from the beginning of the campaign, we've led the development of a sector-wide consensus around the need for a national strategy on climate health and wellbeing for Australia. The campaign is supported by many of Australia's leading health and medical organisations and stakeholders. And the central campaign ask has become a formal policy position of many leading health and medical associations and medical colleges. We've learned about the benefits of developing health sector leadership through collaborative advocacy and how that can build capacity among health stakeholders to become effective advocates for climate action to protect health. We've also learned about the value of providing evidence-based solutions to guide government, industry and community action on climate change and health. By bringing the insights and expertise of health stakeholders together with scientific evidence, we've made a positive contribution towards shaping policy on climate change and health in Australia. So the next steps for this campaign, we'll be working over the next few months to update the framework um, for a national strategy from the 2017 version to 2.0. We'll be bringing it together with the policy recommendations that we developed in um, 2020 in the Healthy, Regenerative and Just Policy Agenda, um, which builds on the seven areas of policy action that we released in the framework and adds an eighth area um, for thriving ecosystems. This helps to underscore the importance of a healthy natural world in underpinning human health and well-being. So we hope to release this um, framework, our updated framework, ahead of the next federal election and secure support for its implementation by the next federal government. I'll just finish here with a final word from our ambassador and patron, Professor Peter Doherty, Nobel Laureate for Medicine. I'll stop there. Thank you very much.